As the Industrial Revolution swept through the 19th century, newfound technologies required unprecedented amounts of chemicals, as well as ever-increasing quantities of iron and steel. To meet these needs, science and industry came together in new and exciting areas of study, including today's disciplines of chemical engineering and material science. At the same time, the United States of America was emerging from the shadow of a debilitating civil war. Industry was joined by education in helping to fuel the nation's recovery, and institutions of higher learning prospered nationwide. The young University of Minnesota, which had been forced to close during the Civil War, reopened in 1869 with a new vigor and sense of purpose. By the turn of the century, the growing school was poised for greatness. World War I was raging as Marion Burton assumed the office of university president in 1917. One of Burton's most influential hires was Lauder Jones, who became dean of what was then the College of Engineering and Architecture. Jones, in turn, persuaded Charles A. Mann to come to Minnesota to head up the newly created division of chemical engineering in the School of Chemistry. For the next 30 years, Professor Mann presided over a field of study that he liked to call the controlled and disciplined magic of everyday life. He often reminded audiences that it was the chemical engineer's task to create wealth out of waste, developing valuable resources from what had been assumed to be useless. That same philosophy also guided the university's School of Mines and Metallurgy. The longevity of Minnesota's mining industry is due in great part to the pioneering work of university faculty who, in the 1940s, developed the taconite process, allowing iron to be extracted from the state's large remaining deposits of low-grade ore. Over time, mines and metallurgy evolved into two distinct areas of study, with mining and metallurgical engineering occupying one arena and metallurgy eventually transforming into the more comprehensive discipline of material science and engineering. As the second half of the 20th century began, transformation was also at work in the university's chemical engineering program. Under the visionary leadership of Neil Amundsen, the department burst onto the national and international scene in the 1950s. While other academic departments were shying away from the further development of mathematical modeling, Amundsen and his team forged on. As he was blazing new intellectual trails, Amundsen recruited some of the brightest minds from around the world, with key hires in the 1950s, including Henry Chuchia, Rutherford Aris, William Rands, Arnold Fredrickson, John Dollar, and L. E. Scriven. The program continued to grow in the 1960s with key additions such as H. Ted Davis, Kenneth Keller, and Lanny Schmidt. Amundsen was a decisive yet cordial leader who built a friendly, family-like atmosphere among his faculty. During his time as department head, innovation occurred in both laboratory and classroom alike, including the introduction of team teaching for undergraduate courses and the first application of the now common lecture recitation course format. As Neil Amundsen and his early hires were shaping the chemical engineering program in the 1950s and 60s, Richard Swaleen, Morris Nicholson, and their colleagues in metallurgy were shaping the program in the School of Mines and Metallurgy, strengthening its focus on material science. As the years progressed, the fields of material science and chemical engineering began to cross over in significant ways, including the joint application of electron microscopy and a shared interest in polymer science. In 1970, Changes in the state's mining industry and the natural evolution of the disciplines within the School of Mineral and Metallurgical Engineering brought about a major reorganization. The programs in mineral and metallurgical engineering were moved to civil engineering. Metallurgy was merged with the Department of Chemical Engineering, resulting in today's current Department of Chemical Engineering and Material Science. Following the merger, Polymer science and polymer processing served as the natural adhesives that linked the two programs together. New faculty continued to infuse the department during the 1970s, 
including key hires such as Chris McCosco, William Gerberich, and Matt Terrell. In 1974, after 25 years of service, Neil Amundsen stepped down from his position as head of the department and was succeeded by Rutherford Aris. After four years as department head, Aris was followed by Kenneth Keller, who led the department from 1978 to 1980. H. Ted Davis then led the program until 1994, bringing on new faculty such as Ed Kustler, Fennel Evans, John Weaver, Wei Shu Hu, Jim Chelikowski, and Frank Bates. Upon becoming the Dean of the Institute of Technology in 1994, Davis was succeeded by Matt Terrell. Terrell led the program until 1999, at which time current head Frank Bates took over the reins of the department. Over the last 100 years, the disciplines of chemical engineering and material science at the University of Minnesota have distinguished themselves through leadership, innovation, and excellence. But perhaps the greatest indicators of success throughout the years have been the program's outstanding graduates. From Harry Heltzer, a 1930s graduate who went on to serve as CEO of 3M Company, to Bob Gore, inventor of the Gore-Tex synthetic material that revolutionized numerous industries worldwide, to recently retired ExxonMobil CEO Lee Raymond, to Art Fry, the inventor of the post-it note, chemical engineering and material science alumni have gone on to make innumerable contributions in both industry and academia. Plus, in the tradition established by Neil Amundsen more than 50 years ago, department faculty and alumni have also motivated and inspired thousands of other scientists and entrepreneurs around the world. For example, 1954 graduate Andy Akravos was a key mentor of Andy Grove, who went on to become a co-founder of Intel Corporation. The Department of Chemical Engineering and Material Science at the University of Minnesota stands ready to build on its rich history, a history of many firsts. Today, the department is poised to reach even greater heights as it confidently moves forward into the 21st century.